About six months ago, March 2023, a coin was found just down there in a field. The coin was about the size of my thumbnail. The coin depicted a king, a king that nobody had ever heard of, completely lost in time for the last two millennia. And yet, 2,000 years ago, his name here may well have struck fear into everybody that lived in this part of the land. And yet, until March 2023, completely forgotten. This is the story of how one coin changed history. This is Danebury Hillfort, quite spectacular and sat in the central part of southern Britain. From its natural high position here, you can see for absolutely miles. It started life in around 550 BC, which was around the time that many similar hill forts in the area were being constructed, within 50 years of Maiden Castle near Dorchester and 100 or so years from Old Serum. Now even more locally than that, there seem to be scores of similar earthworks around us. Whether they were all used in the true hill fort sense of the word, or perhaps other uses such as marketplaces, is very much open to debate, but Danebury? Well, Danebury certainly stood out for its defensive purposes. Now, archaeology through the 60s and 70s told us a lot about what happened here and the events. So life started here 550 BC, certainly with regard to defences, when the first ditch was dug. Spoil from that was put on the inside to make a bank, and that bank itself was encased with a wooden timber frame, which gave a rampart of sorts. And that rampart would have certainly been opposing from down the hill, just there. So between that point, the 550 BC, and then 400 BC, 150 years, the ramparts were remodelled significantly and they turned it into more of a traditional rampart where the, the wooden beams would go down into the slope, making a, a face if you were looking in from the outside. At some point thereafter, more earthworks were placed and we see at least one more ditch and a complex set of earthworks that remains here to this day. Is a reason I can't fly a drone here today. And that gives us context of Danebury, that gives us context of its place in this community and of course a bit about its defensive uh, purpose for a half a millennia. But what about the coin that was found just there? How does that fit into Danebury Hillfort and how does that change history as we know it? So we're now in the heartland of the Belgia tribe, the heartland here, Danebury Hill Fort. Now we know what the tribes of the Iron Age may have looked like from Caesar's writing, and they may have looked something like this. Both the Belgia and the Atrobates formed from uh, fleeing tribes from Gaul and Artois, respectively, around that time. Further to this, Ptolemy wrote about the location of some of these tribes, but bear in mind we have no real accurate maps, we just have a broadly triangular shaped Britain. Now Ptolemy wrote of the locations of these tribes, but he tended to just refer to them against each other. This tribe was south of that one, east of this one, rather than give any accurate sense that we would be able to use and understand today. So how do we know the location of these tribes? How did I draw that map, even if it was a rough interpretation? Well, we have one of the most useful resources in doing that, which is the coin. People have written about this in depth, academic papers and dissertations all on this subject, but I'll try and tell you in my own words exactly how this helps us map those tribes. Now Iron Age coins tend to have three attributes that can help. Number one, a tribe name on them. Number two, a king's name on them. And number three, the location that they were found. Take for example, southeast of Britain. 
That's the area you're first going to come to if you're attacking from mainland Europe. There's been scores of coins found within a specific area, probably what we commonly know today as Kent. Now, that area and those coins all have uh, a king on them. No tribe name, but they have one of three different kings. Now, Ptolemy and Caesar wrote about that area, and Caesar wrote that he encountered a tribe called the Canti. So we can assume that those kings all ruled in that area, and based on the location of those coins, we can broadly draw our boundary for that tribe. We can further this with other examples, including that of Commius, the ruler of the Atrabates. The Duro trees also had coins, and again, this helps us map the area broadly. But what about this tribe? What about the Belgia, the people living here, pre-Roman Britain? The first Celtic coinage in Britain was minted in what is now northern France. They entered Britain probably around the same time the Belgia and the Atrabates were fleeing that area. It is said that the Canti were the first to mint coin here in Britain in around 80 BC. Now all of the other tribes here in the south, apart from the Dumoni, well they did the same. Now here at Danebury and in the surrounding fields, a number of coins have been found. And if you've got a spare 500 to 2,000 pounds, well, you can pick one up on a few auction sites. Silby's contains quite a few, but you'll note there's one thing missing from them all. Quite important to today's story. Well, I've walked half of the inner ring now I'm going to head down into the ditch and see if I can find some evidence of the other rings that are here and maybe avoid some noise from the local airfield middle wallop. So what did all those coins have in common on the website? Silby's that were all found in this local area from the tribe, the Belgia. Well, none of them had a name of a king or a tribe or anything at all other than a fairly recognisable symbol or two that was stamped on there when it was minted. So between 80 and 50 BC, things changed again. Not only were they minting their own coins in the mainland UK, what is now mainland UK, but they also started to put their king's name on. The Atrobates to the north east of here, the Catavellini further north, they did the same. 50 BC, things were really changing and you wanted to show your vanity, you stuck your name on your coin. But here, Belgia, nothing at all, no evidence of that, until a man named Lewis Fudge was swinging his metal detector in a field below and he heard the all familiar beep. Doubt Mr. Fudge had any idea that that beep would later fetch him in a few months' time at auction £20,000. Not only had he found an Iron Age coin dating between 50 and 30 BC, but he'd also found one with an inscribed name, the first in this area in history. That name was Usonertos interpreted as mightier as Usos, a Celtic god. So now we have a new ruler here. We have a new name. We have a name for the first time in 2000 years of a forgotten king. And now modern archaeology suggests that this place was out of use by the year 100 BC. And here we are now with a king in 30 BC. Maybe that makes us look at this place slightly differently. So if this place truly was out of use in a defensive way, that means our king potentially got on well with neighbours, there was good trade there, and maybe the fear wasn't from the neighbours, it was from across the water and the impending threat from the Romans, because they would certainly already know of that threat. So what this coin does do is perhaps open up a whole load more questions. It was only a month ago as I filmed this that it was found and sold. 
so perhaps there's a lot more research that can be done and maybe the the name that was on that coin relates to some writings by the early Greeks and Romans that hadn't already been interpreted and now maybe that will make sense who knows but this has been the story of the coin that changed history my name's Paul join me next time